Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. Our guest is Serge Courtois. He does some amazing things as a mix engineer, 21 Pilots, Lav, and more, and also has a very cool plug-in called Alphorn. You'll meet him in just a second. We're also really happy to announce the second Abbey Road Institute, based in Miami, Pensado's Place Scholarship. Uh, the first guy, which you're going to meet in just a second, had a great time, worked with incredible artists, Will Smith and other folks, Latin Grammy winners, um, produced his own craft, produced other students. Um, this is a fabulous school and a fabulous opportunity. You can see the link right here to, to sign up. Go do it right away. I think it closes February 10th. And if you want to know about it, don't take it from me. Listen to this quick interview with last year's winner. Here's Kevin Aguirre. Kevin, welcome. Good to see you. Hi, Herb. Good to see you, too. Um, <clears throat> when Kevin caught on the Zoom, I said, Kevin, you look like an audio professional. When I saw you before, you, you're you just this kind of punk-faced kid, and now you're, you've worked with Will Smith and a bunch of stuff. I mean, here's what I understand about the program, and you tell me if it's correct. First of all, you get to work in small groups where, where you're working with incredible mentors and getting hands-on attention. Is that true? That's right, Herb. It's a small group of producers. And the cool thing about it is that everyone is at a different level on different things. So some of us or some of them like to mix better. Some of them write a lot of songs. Some of them produce more. So it's like very personalized and catered to each person and, uh, you know, to each person's objectives. So that's that's been pretty cool. That, and not only pretty cool, that's also smart learning for the future. Meet people where they live and accelerate them where they are, as opposed to holding them to just one standard. You know, good on Abbey Road for that. The other part is, there's a number of other parts. So they also have an artist program, like some serious artists come down there and you get to work with and around them. Is that That's my understanding. Yeah, of course. So we've had the chance to work with artists uh, who are here in the program uh, for artists, and they are all amazing. They've already had a lot of experience, and we've written songs with them, produced with and for them. Uh, actually, today I just had a session with one of the artists here, ama amazing artist, and with a great songwriter from outside. So we also have the, that kind of experience here. But um, since our house and Abbey Road is such a... It's such an important place for the industry here in, my, here in Miami. Uh, we've also had, uh, for example, writing camps for publishers. So there was a whole writing camp, like a whole week, uh, like a month ago here with a bunch of songwriters from all over the world came. Wow. And we had the chance to assist some sessions as engineers. Uh, I had the chance to, to write actually for a big artist. We like Latin Grammy awarded writers as well. So it was a great experience. Because wow. that way you can really assess uh, how, how good you are and also how what you're missing, you know, uh -huh. like compared to these people that have already been there, you know. How, how, how have you grown? What, how, what has the program done to you? Where do you, can you, do you, do you notice where you've improved and where you've grown? Yeah, so in technical terms, uh, mm -hmm. having someone like, like Robin, for example, who's a great mentor, mm -hmm. Uh, he's taught me a lot about, I would say, like mixing and mastering in the sense of like respecting a lot the the creating cho creative choices of the producer. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes at this age you want to do a lot, like you want to uh, uh, alter everything a lot, and sometimes you just gotta like chill and and let the music speak for you know for itself. Yeah, and in creative terms, uh, it's been really good to to aim for producing relevant music to well today's uh, commercial world, mm -hmm. but also art house had has an Abbey Road has that thing about uh, going a little bit beyond, you know, with mm -hmm. the lyrics, with the melodies, like don't not being like mediocre, but like trying to push as far as you can and making the best um, possible thing, making something that you're proud of. So, so when you have that like mentality, you really like move fast. Like I feel like everything, like my workflow, the way I write songs, the way I think about artists, everything has improved really, really fast. And the, and the beauty of that is that along with your craft improving, 
and your speed improving, it makes you available for other things. You could write for commercials. You could write for streaming. You could write for, you know, obviously you can make music for artists. Um, but if you're called to do something else in your wheelhouse, now you have more tools. That's 100% correct. And, and yeah, I just feel like the, the tools translate so well. Like the, the better I get at mixing, the better I get at producing. And then when I'm producing, I get better at songwriting because I'm already, when I'm, I'm writing, I already have ideas about how the final product is going to sound. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's great to like learn about all the processes and then like have all these tools available. The, the other thing that I, that I think I've seen in just pictures, Instagram, other kinds of stuff is the incredible diversity there. There's hip hop, there's Latin music, there's pop music, there's, There's everything and also every kind of representation of people there. So it's a, a real mixing pot. That is true. And also that's represented in the difference of uh, ages. Like we have here a, a girl that is actually going through high school. Like she's super young and she, she found a way to, to be remote and study here at the same time as she's like a very gifted songwriter. Wow. And we also have people that have worked in the industry for 10 years as mixing engineers, mm -hmm. but they want to improve uh, their production skills, for example. Mm -hmm. And then we have someone who does uh, like hip hop beats and amazing working with these big names and some other people that have written with great uh, artists, I don't know, in Puerto Rico. So yeah, the diversity is, is great. It's great. So with, with all that experience that you've gone through, would you highly recommend that people sign up for this potential next Pensado scholarship? I would definitely recommend you to sign up for this scholarship. I think if you want to be an audio professional, the audio professional of the present and of the future, you have to be able to, to work at any stage as a pro. So you have to be able to write songs and take it, take the song to the mastering process. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's what they're offering here. A very complete experience and also very hands-on working, you know, with real in the real life, in the real world. See, folks, this is why people like Kevin Aguirre, Robin Rumors, Julio, Abby Rowe, this is what makes us so proud to be associated. Um, driven by their own desire, we're a step along the way, but literally defining how to be educated, how to get you to the next level, how to prepare you during crazy times to actually go out and, and do your craft and taking it one step at a time and really putting out audio professionals. Kevin, you have a huge future in front of you. Um, you have my man, Robin Rumor behind you and, and the Abbey Road Institute behind you. And we're always there for you, know that. So folks, if you want the experience that Kevin has, enter the Pensado Play Scholarship. You see the link right here below us. It's open till February 10th. Do not hesitate. Go learn. Become a badass. Kevin, talk to you later, man. Talk to you later, Herb. Thank you so much. Peace. So as you can see, lots of opportunity. As we said, get to the link, apply, try to do this. Robin Rumor and, and the guys down at Abbey Road Institute are just really incredible. Miami's got good weather. So do it. Uh, you'll learn your craft will move forward and you'll get to work with some real baddest if you would hit us on our socials like subscribe click notify we really appreciate that and uh without further ado learn a lot from this guy right here here's serge courtois serge how are you man Hi, hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. Uh, really good really good um berkeley so many things start at berkeley and move from there how was berkeley you know formative for you Um, without Berkeley, there would be nothing really. It, it was the very first time I, I set foot in a studio was at Berkeley. Mm. So I, I knew I wanted to do something in that direction, but I've never had, never had the opportunity to go, you know, see a studio from the inside. And I, I remember the, the moment till this day when I first stepped into a studio, Studio E, and uh, I was like, yep, this is it. This is, this is what, it, what it has to be. Um, I was a, I was a drum set major as well, mm. but a um, couple of semesters in, I noticed, nah, I'm not bad, but I'm not that great, to be honest. Mm. So mm. I thought, <laughs> nah, I'll just, um, I'll focus on, on this, which really became my passion. And um, 
yeah, I mean, Berkeley, I, um, I, I had the opportunity to go to LA for a semester where um, also that became very clear. Yep, LA is the way to go after, after Berkeley, after I graduated. So, and sure enough, after I graduated, I moved out to LA. I got an internship at a, at a studio called Igloo Music in, in Burbank and worked my way up from the, um, the, the intern, getting the coffees, to slowly you know, backing up drives and to prepping sessions, editing sessions, mi uh, mixing sessions. And then later on, I, um, I, was, um, I was one of the recording engineers for the voiceover department we had at the time. Mm. And um, it was great. I had a great time. It was amazing. I learned so much, really so, so much. And, mm. um, but yeah, uh, mixing was always the thing that, that was... Um, that it had to be, it had to be mixing. And then that's why I decided to, um, you know, start my mixing career. You know, Dave, Dave and I are not that smart. And so when we have summa cum laude people on and we have somebody in our staff who's magna cum laude and we're, Dave and I are not cum or laude. Um, <laughs> the, uh, we're more something in lordy. Um, but, but for our audience, one of the things that, that Sir said that, that I just don't want you to miss is that he was able to objectively judge where he should be and where he should not be. Too many people go down the path hearing from their mom and their sisters and their girlfriends that, Ooh, you're the best ever. You got to get some objectivity to you. It's going to help advance your career. And because you're not good at one thing doesn't mean you're not good it means you have to find the thing that you're good at. So, so take that note from Serge. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. About that. Yeah, no, you're totally Serge. right. It, it wasn't easy. I mean, I played music my entire life. I played piano and later drums. And um, that's what I wanted to become as a professional musician. But it just, I, there, was, there was just a point where it was clear that this is not going to be enough for, for, for it to become like a truly professional. Comparing myself to other students, I was like, nah. If we are in an audition together, he's going to get the gig, not me. So that that was really the point where I decided that now engineering, recording, mixing, sure. that's definitely my work. Sure. Right. Did you have any any background in like uh, software or plugins or or that type? What the the plugin that that we're going to discuss in in depth? Um, how how did that come about in in your mind? Was it you saw a need and you and you tried to solve it? Yeah, exactly. I was, um, I, um, on so many fronts, there was, first of all, I'm very interested in, in that side of the programming, coding, even though I, I've, I've never really learned that. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I was always very interested. I took a couple classes here and there after Berkeley because it just, it was so intriguing to me how, how just that whole world works. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, so well, yeah, the plugin, it became, uh, really an issue that I saw just working from home. I was like, oh, why has nobody done this yet? And um, well, well, why don't uh, we explain what it is so it's not out of context? Yeah. Serge has a plugin called Alphorn, um, and he saw a need, which he's, which he's talking about. So see the need, that, tell us the need that you saw and then how you solved it. Um, the problem I saw was that there was no real easy way to get um, audio from your from your cell phone or whatever into, into your studio rig, into your Pro Tools or DAW, or Ableton, whatever. And it was always a, a um, I don't know, it was an aux cable, you know, going th through your interface and whatnot. It was always super complicated and it never really sounded good. And it was always a hassle. And um, that's just in my home studio. I know a lot of people in their home studios have a fixed aux auxiliary cord they have lying around when they have somebody come by and they want to play through the speakers. But even when you go to bigger studios and they have their, their analog boards and everything, it becomes really complicated just the way the routing is done in the rooms with the, mm -hmm. the Pro Tools rig, you know, going to the, 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 their boards into the speakers and everything. So that's really the need I saw was, well, we are, I mean, cell phones don't even have a headphone jack anymore. So why are we in the audio community still using headphone jacks. I mean, we should be the ones who, who are leading this, right? So that's why I thought there should be an easier way. And um, that's why I came up with Outpoint. So you can um, stream any audio from, from your device 
straight into your um, DAW. That was that was the the reason and the yeah. And so it's it's launched. It's um, it's available iOS now, right? And you're expanding to Android. Is that is that the status of things? Um, as of right now, we're it's compatible with Mac and Windows. Oh, great! Uh, so it's working on both computers, but um, tying into it, you uh, iOS is it's natively supported because we're using AirPlay to get right. audio from your device into your computer. Um, right. That being said, um, as far as I know, with Android, there is um, apps that enable this, um, so you can you can use it. Um, but I'm not an Android user. I'm not that well versed in it, to be quite honest. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, the next step for us will be to um, also support uh, Android natively. So there's no no need for any apps on your phone. When your client comes in, they can just connect it, and there's no app downloading or setting up. It just it right. just works out of the box, basically. It felt to me like uh, like I I did have the cable. So so an artist or a client would come in. I'd hand them a, about a ten foot cable. They'd try to plug it in their phone or whatever to play me the demo and see where we were going. And this is an elegant solution for that because it seems way, way, way more uh, professional. And it's also less hassle. And it's also going to get you a compliment because they didn't have to hook up a wire. And that gives you trust. <laughs> All that works right. together somehow. And, uh, right. And, and uh, I might be getting ahead, but one of my favorite things that – to do with it is stream Spotify or, or, or Tidal and then and then put some of those straight into uh, into my references. Yeah, I, that's that's that was the very very first idea I had because I wanted a reference in my Pro Tools session mm -hmm. to fall back on to check the mix what I'm working on, and it was always complicated and ah oh, why is it so so complicated for something so easy. Mm -hmm. and, and now that was really the, the beginning, the initial idea for Alphorn. And um, the more I showed it to people and the more people came up with really creative ideas on how to use it, which mm -hmm. I hadn't even thought of. So it's really, really interesting to see uh, how, how everyone's been using it so far. It's, it's very, well, right now, very exciting. you can connect three devices. Uh, do you have uh, plans for more devices to be, kick, be connected in the future? Yes, we have. Um, we can connect as, as as up to hundreds. I mean, the yeah. it's, it's totally capable. But um, we thought, well, why clutter the design with a thousand different slots if people only connect in oh, okay. one or two clients at the time? But um, it sounds like some people they 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 might need it uh, need more client connectivity uh, connectivity because um, they have a couple of friends over a producer, two three songwriters. They bring. Their friends, you have like six, seven people in the room, and everybody wants to show what they've been listening to. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a very interesting uh, take on it. So yeah, we'll we'll probably add it uh, more more client slots. Yeah. Now two two quickies. One, um, this is also priced really reasonably. And where can people find it? The um, yes, we I priced it at sixty dollars a license. Um, my goal was to make it available to everyone. I didn't want to just play to the big studios who can afford super expensive plugins. I mm -hmm. also wanted um, the, the home producer to be able to afford it. And um, we uh, the, the easiest way is if you go to either alphorn.io or mountainroaddsp.com. Both will gotcha. bring you to the, to the same site. Yeah. Go audience, go, 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 go. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the holiday season. We're bringing you good stuff. Um, now, now, not to to miss this. Um, I mean, when you look at your list of acts that you have mixed, Twenty One Pilots, Nick Jonas, um, Aloe Black, Avril Lavigne. I mean, it, Biba, Baby, Biba Rexa, and it just goes on. Tiesto, like Jason Derulo, the the mixer guy is a real guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that L.A.-based stuff that you learned at Igloo and you worked on Californication and all kinds of stuff like that. And then what's fascinating to me about when, when you know, when really smart people take their career and put it in a strategy and move it forward, you can see the thought process sometimes. I'm going to learn this and I'm going to learn that and then I'm going to, I got to be ambitious and be successful, which means I got to be I'm competitive. 
Um, and then as I get a rhythm, so we're never sat, not weird. You're never satisfied. So, so constantly things come up. Like I got to this level and then I'm going to do a plug in. And then the next thing is I'm going to buy Amazon or, or whatever it is, <laughs> you know, that's, like, that's plan, yeah. yeah. So the information that you glean from all that mixing success allows you to sort of look at the process and see, hey, what would have made my life easier? What would make someone else's life easier? Is that a fair comparison? Absolutely. Yes, hmm. absolutely. Um, it, because, I mean, it's um, when you're working every day, there's all, always the same problem you encounter. It's like every day you're like, oh, why is this not a thing? Why is this yes. not a thing? And it yeah. just gets to the point where like, oh, if nobody's going to do it, then I'm just going to do it. So, um, yes. So and what would what would be the surge signature when people came to the surge? Was there a surge signature that they're coming for in the mix, or do you have a certain kind of style? What 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 do you think people think? Hmm. Um, that's that's a very interesting question. Um, it's like it's like a Dave Pansado mix, but like a little better, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You just won batter's box and we haven't even done it yet. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. No, I mean, I thought, um, I, it's, it's hard. And I thought about this a lot, but honestly, I, 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 um, I just came to the conclusion that my ear just sounds different than other people's ears that I hear things differently. So, and I think that's just what it boils down to. In the end, you just mix something that sounds good to you. Yeah. And everybody has a slightly different ear and taste. Yeah. Um, yeah. that being said, it sounds like, uh, I mean, I mix most of the stuff I mix is definitely pop and uh, EDM too. Mm -hmm. We just had this, this really big hit Friday this year, which you probably heard a thousand times on the radio. Yeah. Congratulations. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah so it's, it, I'm very much in that. Um, that's where I feel most comfortable to the pop EDM world. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Recently, nice. it seems like, like a lot of our, Profession is 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 privy to a solution looking for a problem as opposed to a problem looking for a solution, you know. And and it's really fun when 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 someone like yourself finds a problem and gives it a solution. And that's not that, that about half the stuff we're given and, and, and have out there today is a solution looking for a problem. Yeah. Oh. I, I got. I guess he agreed with me. <laughs> he, he did. My my dogs drowned it out. Um, uh, but I, but I do think that that's part of what's interesting about the process of constantly being inside a technical revolution. I, I I don't think we are often aware that that it just constantly moves and evolves, and there's something weekly, and we're constantly trying to deal with it and that has upside and downside mm -hmm. i'm not saying that it's not true in other places we recently interviewed jack antonoff and, and we're going to get uh, your plug into him amongst a couple of others but we were talking about that same thing and how you kind of have to just stay in touch with yourself if you react to all the forces pulling at you you know i have a little protege that has joined our team and and People are really reacting to his songs. And by the way, he's a pop songwriter. He's just 22. Um, and I keep trying to say to him, take all that and dismiss it and give them a good song. Like, totally. don't overanalyze, don't think. In that, doesn't that make sense, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, funny that you mention it because the plugin, I basically kept it a secret for a year and a half. Mm. where absolutely i didn't tell anyone about it not the only one who knew was my wife who i said you know i think this is something i want to look into and uh yeah just uh, just a couple months ago is when i started telling people oh by the way i did this thing i've been working on it for a while do you want to check it out and because for that very reason i didn't want to be um you have this idea and you should just follow it right and right because you get a a lot of input from from people, be it good, positive or negative, or they have different ideas, and it always kind of waters down your your initial idea. Yeah, um, and especially at the beginning when you're when you're kind of unsure as to is it going to work out, is this the right thing, and you kind of have to go through that process yourself. And if you go through it with other people, it, it seems very um, yeah, you lose track of of, what, of your initial goal. And I didn't want to do that, so I I kept it a secret for me until yeah. And you know what? Just just for Dave's sake, 
and yours. I, I will give you a quick one on my version of that. The number of people in my world, <clears throat> when I told them, hey, I'm going to do a podcast on audio, <laughs> and this is going to do this, and we're going to cover mixed engineers. And I had people who literally wanted to take me to the hospital. Like, her, what <laughs> are you talking? It's not even what you do. <laughs> it's not even what you do. Like, and, and honestly, because I'm so competitive, there's nothing sweeter when they had to come back and go, Oh man, we knew it the whole time, man. I knew it was just gonna <laughs> it was gonna blow up. Man. It was it was certain. I was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I have one dear friend where he just he's real stick in the mud. And, you know, the kids gotta go to Harvard and everything has to be perfect. And he would just not break until we had a book. And Dave and I are on the cover of the book, and 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 it was covered by Forbes. And he's on all these boards. He was like, Forbes. I was like, yeah, Forbes. <laughs> and they've come two or three times. So so it, in real life, it is really true. You can get deterred and throw it off your thing if you don't have some convictions and keep keep your path clear. Um, yeah. on, now, the other part that, that is interesting to me, was there a shift when you move from L.A. back to Germany just in terms of recording, the way you think about recording, the process, or were you just – back in another country it was the same thing well um well before germany there was still five years of there was five years of switzerland in between oh so Jesus. yeah that's hence the hence the the name and the the alporn and mount road I, and everything i wondered where alporn came from got it got it yeah got yeah, it. yeah so um uh well honestly um uh re i didn't do much recording here in Europe, you know, I, I purely do mixing really uh, okay. 99.9% of what I do is mixing. Mm -hmm. um, um, so was it a shift? Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, LA, you have your connections and everything. And all of a sudden I find myself in this very right. a small town in the middle of the Alps and uh, beautiful. Sure. But uh, all of a sudden you're being pulled out of, of the community, which was, which was pretty hard. Uh, yeah. But um, it it also uh, on a different uh, on the other hand it, it felt it felt good not to be um, distracted by the LA thing, thing. The, yeah yeah the, yeah. the, the, the I, I always felt that as an engineer be it a recording engineer mixing engineer it's not this super awesome mega glamorous you mix one song you get your you buy your Lamborghini kind of thing right so, right. Right. And and LA has a lot of those, be it um, you know, actors or 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 uh, artists, whatever, you know. And there's it, it, it felt a little um it felt hard to to compete with a quote unquote regular job in LA. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. um and um all things aside, it uh, to become self employed to start my own business, I just honestly I didn't have the money to start a business in LA. Sure. Um, sure. And when I moved to to Switzerland with with my wife, that was the plan. She was supporting me for the first bit, you know. Um, she was paying rent, and I was focusing on my mixed career. Shout so, out to her. Shout yes. out. To her. Yeah. Yes, she's she's yeah. probably outside the door listening. So uh, she, tell her to come in and wave at us. We we want to meet her. Can she come in? Uh, no. Or she's, is she shy? <laughs> she's, well, she's in her pajamas well, already so <laughs> oh well lord god knows we need something that lifts up these shows so uh <laughs> but but i will tell you um and, and dave and i have often talked about literally for a decade about doing a show on couples yeah because that that process of being supportive of somebody else who a either has to risk the savings or you have to do the work the psychological stress of it, the hours, missing yes. child rearing, yeah. um, you know, depression. There's a mm -hmm. lot of stuff, and it goes both ways. It's it's the person who's supportive of the person who's doing the stuff, and then vice versa. How that person comes back and doesn't forget about their primary relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, we we think that's important. All of us are here yeah. through some version of that. So. Um, Shout outs to your wife. Um, she bet right, and you and you married and you married up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our profession, Herb, is is really tough on relationships. So, 
We might have a problem finding a, a couple that's still together. <laughs> they're, they're splitting like a, it's, it's really, really hard. I mean, you know, I, I, I'll admit I've had trouble with it too. It's, uh, it takes a lot of effort to get things right. It's yeah. The hours, the, 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 everything is, um, it, it's quite taxing at times. There's obviously mm-hmm. upsides of course, but, um, sure. yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. It's, 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 it's part of what I think the audience should not ignore you having your life balanced helps your creativity. Um, and, and it allows you to be healthy through it. There, there are a number of people, you know, Dave's nickname back in the day was hard drive. And this was before we were using computers. <laughs> this was, <laughs> no, it's true. And it was just because his work ethic was so hard, but he physically would go around the clock, no matter what was needed, live on Cheetos, uh-huh. you know, drive 50 miles. And that had an adverse effect. Um, and we know countless people like that. I do think that it's moved along and we become a little bit more sophisticated and, I remember Lizzo's producer, Ricky Reed, was one of the first people who came on and talked about mental health and that he was dealing with stuff. Now, and this is not to make the show bad. It's really about what we try to do at Pensado's Place is bring you, bring you the real stuff. And if you're going to be good, then you have to embrace all of who you are as a human. As a human. Totally. Um, yeah. you know, and so part of what I so appreciate you about you and also Lucas Keller, your manager, the uh, Lucas and I have always had a connect and it's, um, it's who he is as a guy and how he approaches mm-hmm. his business, let alone how yep. successful it is. He has a certain kind of connection to the artist side of it, where he thinks about it holistically. Mm-hmm. And, and as a manager, I noticed that. Um, and, 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 and so that, that's why this is so easy and, and we can admire you so much. So, so some of the things that I liked about the processes that you, that, that, that the plugin really, really, really does well is you can have three writers sitting on the couch in the back of the room. They don't have to get up. They don't have to put a wire. They can just directly send it to the producer who's at the mainframe, mainframe uh, studio and if they want to hear their rough through the big speakers they can just do it and and then everybody has their own dedicated uh number you know and then also uh tell me if i'm wrong but one of those three people can be on ableton and, and everybody else on pro tools and you can still get through and 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 use it totally. together like that so absolutely so it's, it's an amazing piece of software and um uh, it's easy to install, and, and uh, I, I think it's the future. I, I think I think that's going to spawn other situations like that. And uh, so, so hats off to you, Serge. You, you really, you. you really, you really found a a, a problem that 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 needed uh, a solution. So, did, did I? Did, uh, what, what are some other things that I've missed in terms of uh, uses for the pl- for the plugin? Um, I mean, there is, there is a very simple one where, like we touched on before, is if you just want to check a reference on Spotify on your phone, you know, so you just stream it to your phone. Right. Another one is, uh, like you said, it doesn't have to be a mobile device. You could also have your laptop set the output of your entire laptop to... Yeah. It's output. on Wi-Fi, we should say. It's, it's all based on, on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yes, exactly. It needs to be on the same network, uh, Wi-Fi network as your computer. Um, so you can have, like you said, you can have a, a producer who's maybe working, let's say, in Ableton and you work in Pro Tools and he's been working on headphones for a couple hours and he just wants to check what he's been working on the, on the big speakers or check with the, with the producer, whatever. He can just output his laptop to Alphorn, send everything over uh, in real time, just stream it to the main computer without having to bounce it out, email it over or whatever. So it's you can... Um, yeah, you can in real time. You can make adjustments, and it I, and that's just um, one connection. You can have three producers. You can have one producer with his laptop. Another guy is um, on his phone. Another guy is, is on his iPad. It really doesn't matter. It's it's fully dynamic in that sense. Nice. Yeah. Now yeah. back to the international version. Dave, are you with us? Are you? Are you yeah, I, I, I I I am. I uh, I oops. I um. I picked up the wrong blue piece of paper. 
Uh, Let's do this thing. Well, all right. So, Serge, um, forget about your quaffed beard and your accent. Just whoop his ass. That's that's really the goal of this. <laughs> um, so, and and because um, you know we have mostly domestic folks, having an international ass whooping is the way to really cap off this week. So, Dave, <laughs> throw it up and get ready to get your 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 block knocked off. Um. Well, if that's if that's the prerequisite, I'm not going to do it. Okay, I'm, I'm right, sensitive, Herb. You know, I'm how I sensitive see. I am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> okay. Here's a Serge, hug. go easy on me, please. I'm hugging you. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking clean your clock, sir. <laughs> um, okay. So, major or minor key? Minor. Uh, lyrics. Songs. Melodies. Harmonies. Ah. Great. 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 Favorite key to work in? A major. Oh man, four forty is the ooh. Your your favorite musical hero? Ooh, wow, that's tough. That is a tough one. I mean, you got a good, you got a, you got some choices in front of you right now. I mean, it's not that <laughs> Um, I'll go with uh, with Tyler Scott. Great answer. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a go. I'm gonna give you one that that uh, that you're gonna like. Plugins. I'll just go with Alporn. Sure. Yeah. Me good too. Call. Me too. Did Did you say Alporn or Alphorn? Either or, but it's Alporn. Okay. Good. Um. Inspiration or hero? Wow. It could it could be an artist you fell in love with when you were ten or twelve years old, you know, something like that. Oh, back then we're going back in time here. I'll go. With, yeah, I'll go with uh, with. Um, I'll just go with the band. I'll just go with Lincoln Park. There we go. Oh, there we go. That nice. was that was my my yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, favorite virtual synth. Mm-hmm. Is it the uh, the Arturia series? Does that? Right. That's a good answer. We'd love that yeah. answer. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Arturia. If if um, now don't give me plug in or dogs or 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 friends, but if if your studio caught fire, what piece of gear or would you try to save? My piece of gear, my my API. What API? My API. Twenty five hundred. I have the twenty five hundred, the fiftieth uh, anniversary series. Wow. Wow. You're nice. limited one. Nice. So that that would probably be the thing that I that I rescue. Nice. Yeah, you whooped his ass. And see you were you were thoughtful and lethal. And yes. that and we, we usually don't get yeah. both. So um <laughs> when you compose, what do you do you what do you play? Do you play something? I play piano. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. We talked about that. Absolutely. Uh, got you. Got yeah. you. Um uh, the again, we are lucky in that week after week we meet brilliants who are doing interesting things. We are in an era um, where people are now doing more than one thing. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to a famous mixers restaurant tomorrow, um, and you know, whether it's manufacturing or brand building or other kinds of things. And, and I, I tell you what warmed the cockles of my heart is I'm watching a sh- I'm watching television and there is a commercial on for a job hiring firm. I, it's, it's not called Indeed. I forget what it's called. And the example they used was a producer who needed a mix engineer. And they wow. go through these mix engineers. And I was like, this is on national television. Now, I don't know what entities help raise the profile of engineering. I know of one, damn it. And uh, and I was like, there wow. you go. Absolutely. Yeah, and it was a full national buy. It was a big deal. And oh, it wow. and it didn't seem it didn't seem unusual. It seemed cool. You know, mm-hmm. and, and I was like, yes. So uh, whatever role we play, it is nothing without the role you play. And, man, we're happy to know you, meet you, and support Alporn. And we are going to continue to do that and spread the word. Um, Thursday, Thank thanks for joining us. Dave, why don't you take us home? Okay. Uh, earlier in the show, we mentioned some mental illness things. And I think 
uh, I'm not going to go deep into it, but I think that uh, that we need to open our hearts and our minds and really get this straight because it involves homelessness. It involves a lot of different things that I think music can cure. In the 60s, music stopped a war, and we can do the same thing today. See you guys next week.